What up, this is Rama Screen, and in the celebration of Three Wishes for Cinderella, which will make its North American debut October 18, I'm here talking with the stars of this wonderful film, Astrid S. and Ellen Peterson. How are you both this morning? Wonderful. Great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Congratulations on the movie, ladies. Uh, Astrid, let me start with you. Um, Cinderella is obviously an iconic character. So many renditions of her over there, so many years. Uh, rags to riches kind of story, very familiar. With all that history, um, so many versions, when you took on this role, did it come with any pressure or responsibility? Did you, did you try to emulate some of the previous versions of Cinderella or what kind of approach to Cinderella that you wanted to give from the start? I did feel a lot of pressure, mainly because um, the original Three Wishes for Cinderella story came in the 70s and it's, it was mm. such a huge movie and still is in Norway. It's kind of like this national treasure. So. Uh, for me even like that film holds a special place in my heart so but um, I kind of just had to try to let go of that and uh, and um, I guess try to to have my own take on it um, and just believe that I was casted for a reason uh, so uh, but it, it was a lot of pressure but it uh, it, it did uh, it seemed like people really enjoyed it in Norway so I'm happy about that. And you did so well. And uh, Ellen, uh, playing the evil stepmother can be tricky, right? I mean, you 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 want to decide how much you uh, you want the audiences to dislike you, how much you want them to kind of understand where she's coming from. Uh, did all that come into play in your process, and uh, or or did you just lean into her terrible side completely and come what may? <laughs> I guess uh, in, in the end it was it was leaning in I think so but we worked of course with uh, a bit of a backstory and uh, talking about her loss and not forgetting that she is of course a woman that has loved and been loved and and she's lost her husband and she's desperate I guess for for recognition and uh, pursuing her ambition in her daughters now so she becomes really cruel uh, but what I discovered is that the more I thought about people that I know that kind of have these cruel tend tendencies is that they enjoy it, you know. So trying mm -hmm. to bring that into the character, uh, it was wonderful to do it. But, you know, it also brought out a horrible side in me. So, um, yes, I, I thought mostly about how will the kids feel about this? And I wanted them to recognize her as someone they were scared of, you know. Uh, she's also a bit stupid, so they wouldn't have too many nightmares, but but uh, yeah, I wanted them to be scared. Like she is a villain and that's that's the story. I love the the hair makeup costumes part of this uh, film. Of course, the setting as well is very white, snowy, cold. And uh, let me let me start with you, Ellen. I, the, your big your character's big hair, the big outfit and the makeup that accentuates stepmother's cruelty. Did you have to? Did you have to sit uh, in that chair for several hours to get the, to have them work done on you? Uh, did it help with your performance? Talk to me about that. Definitely helped with the performance. I'm so grateful for both costume and makeup. They did such a wonderful job. It was really just to lean into what they created. And uh, yeah, no, I mean, sitting in the in the makeup chair for us actors is kind of our little spa and our little therapists. And uh, mostly, I mean, uh, one and a half hours maybe, but it was just uh, really worth it. And Astrid, along the same line, um, because and, you know, not only you had a dazzling princess gown, but at one point you also, you know, uh, uh, had that period piece man man's clothing that you had to wear. And then, of course, you you did the bow and arrow thing. I mean, talk to me about that process. Did you, did you also have to train bow and arrow beforehand or did you have that skill? No, no, I did not have that skill. I had to train uh, for the bow and arrow and the horse riding. But um, that was, yeah, it was such a fun character to play, to be able to, you know, do all of those things within this project. And yeah, like you said, the the man cost, man's costume with the, the mustache and everything is, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I, 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 the costume designer, she spent a lot of time trying to figure out and find something that was authentic to the time period and what people would actually wear in Norway out in the snow. Um, so it was a lot of uh, vintage fur and, and leather and uh, wool. So it actually kept us uh, quite warm, even though it was very cold. Astrid, you are a very successful pop singer. How has that transition been like for you from singing to acting? Do you find one easier than the other? 
I think what I, I, I think is similar with being a, you know, a songwriter and, and performer and actor is that it's something I find challenging, which I quite enjoy. And, you know, I've only done one acting project, but with, even with music, I've done it for several years now and it never gets easier. It's something you like, um, it's as difficult as it was in the beginning, which I quite enjoy. Uh, it keeps me on my toes, I guess. So, uh, um, but I, I also, I just love how it's all about telling a story and connecting with an audience and basically bringing people together. So um, I feel very fortunate to be able to do what I do. And the final question for both of you then, um, what is it about the story of Cinderella that resonates with you? Uh, why do you think Cinderella is so timeless, so beloved, that it keeps getting retold again and again for, more, for many more years to come? Let me start with you, Ellen. I think, uh, you know, we've talked about how many different stories there is in this tale. You know, there is this, uh, this prince who can get anyone he wants, but what he wants is a genuine girl, like a genuine heart. That's a good message. And, uh, you know, from Cinderella, you can become whoever or whatever you want, as long as you're true to yourself. And like we said, like love never dies and cruelty never will. I would say also the fact that, uh, um, yeah, basically what you said, Ellen, but like ki kindness always wins. And, and um, uh, I love how, especially Cinderella is so affectionate um, with herself and towards animals and nature. And she really wants to take care of that. And she has so much respect for that. So uh, um, that's also so, from the movie, at least, not the original fairy tale, if that was the question. But um, yeah, I think Ellen put it uh, perfectly. Awesome. All right, for my fans at home, everybody go check out Three Wishes for Cinderella, which will make its North American debut on October 18 on VOD Digital, Blu-ray and DVD combo. Astrid and Ellen, thank you for talking to me. Congratulations and Tusen Tak. Oh, I hope you love <laughs> <laughs>